Super Rugby is back, folks. We're already into the second round, but the commentators are annoying me. I consider myself a fairly patient person. I don't get annoyed too easily, but I am human, and things do annoy me. Uh, and in this case, it was listening to some of the New Zealand pundits talk uh, kind of arrogantly, I felt, but um, I'll talk to you about what I heard and you tell me whether I'm getting my knickers in the twist for nothing or is this a kind of common theme which is ongoing. Um, we're talking Blues Highlanders, which was round two, game one, Super Rugby, hell of a game. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. Like there's a moment at the end of the first half, the Blues are in their own end goal area, their own teammates expect Steven Perifeta to kick the ball out and he just runs out of his own end goal area, goes halfway, more than halfway down the field and the Blues end up scoring a try from a penalty a bit later, but it's amazing. Great rugby. But there seems to be this theme that like only, only New Zealanders can play this kind of rugby or our rugby is somehow better or purer than everybody else's rugby. Now, the reason I say this and it came up in this game is because Reese Patchell, is playing uh, in this game. He played 10 for the for the Highlanders. And he's a former Welsh international. Now, if not every New Zealand rugby fan knows who Reese Patchell is, I could absolutely understand. If you're an Irish rugby fan and don't know half the super rugby players from New Zealand, I would understand. It's from the other side of the world. You know your own market best and then the teams you play more. So if you're looking at the other side of the world, I get it. Reese Patchell had 20-odd caps for Wales. Not that many New Zealand rugby fans are going to be familiar with this game. But I would expect commentators to at least have done a bit of homework. Some of them do, some of them don't. And the difference is uh, is pretty apparent. He put in a hell of an offload in this game. It was a thing of beauty. Really uh, lovely set up a try uh, for the Landers. And uh, yeah, they, they talked up his skills about how it was great offload. And uh, one of the play-by-play -play commentator talked about how the longer the season goes on, he'll become more accustomed to super footy, which is a bit of... They had some dead air to kill when he was lining up the conversion. I think he's adapted pretty well. I think, uh, you know, Reese Patchell was pretty much made for Super Rugby in his style of game. But okay, if he has to adapt, I'm sure he has to adapt a little bit. That's fine. 15 minutes later go by, and uh, Patchell scores a try, which is a great bit of play. Morgan Turanui, the Aussie commentator, mentions we haven't seen a Northern Hemisphere 10 come down here with the ability to challenge the line and play flat like this. And like I say, Patchell's made for Super Rugby. He's always played like that. And then we get the New Zealand commentator, Joe Wheeler, who says, and kind of jokingly, I'll admit, but I don't know if he threw an offload in his whole career up in Wales. I doubt it. Like... You've obviously never seen the guy play. Like, do you think they not throw they don't throw offloads in Wales? And of all the people to compare offloading game to Reese Patchell. I mean if Dalton Papali, who's had twenty odd caps for the All Blacks, went up to Wales and Welsh fans were like, Who the hell is this guy? I might have seen him play for the All Blacks before and he made two tackles and somebody said, Bro, I bet that's the most tackles he's ever made down in Super Rugby, you wouldn't have to make many tackles. New Zealand fans would be cringing pretty hard. If I was a Welsh fan and had decided to tune into Super Rugby for the first time, I'd be cringing pretty hard at the implication that this dude doesn't know how to throw an offload because he's from Wales and they always just kick for the corner. And then Morgan Turanui <clears throat> put in a little bit later, if you've watched a lot of Patchell up north, that's the way he plays. Guy who watches the game, guy who doesn't watch the game. There's nothing that special about being able to throw, throw an offload. Lots of guys can do it. It's not unique uh, to the New Zealand game. And it goes back to, like, I mean, we had Fozzy doing it when he was in charge of the All Blacks. If you remember when the All Blacks pumped the Italians by 90-odd points, he kind of bizarrely made reference to the South African game. Again, to talk to this point, like, it's not a pundit, this is a coach, but it's the same kind of concept about how our rugby is somehow better. Like, Fozzy was asked, when your team scores 96 points, it's hard to say your team was challenged or tested you basically into the playoffs without being tested and you don't know where your team is at. That's the question, which is a pretty fair question after you've just won by almost 100 points or put 100 points on a team almost. And um, Fozzie initially talked about the pressure they put on themselves and wanting to have a good response after the kind of big, big break between games that they had. And he mentioned that, that we can play good rugby. So the answer was kind of normal up until that point. And then... Out of the blue, he just kind of mentioned the South Africa-Ireland game, which was an amazing game. 
a proper arm wrestle. And he said, look at the South African and Ireland game. It was a very different game of rugby. You know, the ball in play was there for 27 minutes in the whole game. So a very start-stop game, very physical, very combative. Whereas you saw a different game tonight. And probably at some point, the world's got to decide which game they'd rather watch. Now, for context, the All Blacks game against the Italians, as Rassi Erasmus pointed out, had about two more minutes ball and play than the All Blacks in Italy. And I think if you asked most neutrals, would you rather we watch rewatch South Africa, Ireland, or New Zealand, Italy, I'd probably go with South Africa, Ireland, because it was a real clash of the titans. I don't know, but this idea that you need to play rugby like the way we play it, because it's better rugby, it's, it gets on my nerves a bit. You can play rugby in lots of different ways. I've watched other sports, and there's different teams who play the sport in different ways. Believe it or not, I even used to watch soccer when I was first living in China and couldn't find much rugby to watch. And I used to watch Stoke City sometimes, and they had this dude, I think his name was Delap, who could throw... A line-out throw, line-out throw? A throw-in. It's not a line-out in soccer. It's a throw-in. He could launch it like a freaking cannon. It was a weapon. They didn't play particularly exciting rugby. They had a big lump of a guy up front that they would try and get long balls to. And it was great. They don't have to just, like, do Barcelona tick 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 million passes. Different teams play different ways. It's the same in rugby. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just a bit frustrating. And then there's this kind of we know best thing. And again, this is not unique to this one game. But they had a couple of scrum resets in this game. And um, they had the play-by-play -play commentator basically set JK up with this one saying, I know you're not a fan of this part of the game, JK. Resets, time spent at scrum. But they need to put some pressure on it, basically saying that the team that was down, the Highlanders, needed to put some pressure on at scrum time. So whilst setting up that this is a bit boring, but they need to use this somehow. And they kind of talk to that point. But then later on, we get the freaking comparison to league again. I don't know why they keep going back to league in this part of the world. But JK says, we just need to speed the game up. Fatigue's an important part of the game. We've seen it in rugby league. Like, like right now, he says, uh, the players like the players right now, that's two or three minutes wasted. I don't know why the rugby league thing keeps coming up. Uh, Wildcard, if you haven't seen his channel, did a massive rant about this, and it was hilarious. I'll try to remember to put a link or a link somewhere. But, yeah. Why, why we keep getting the league comparison, I'm not sure. If Super Rugby's not getting massive crowds, despite the fact that that was a hell of a game... I don't think it's because of scrum resets. The rugby, the club rugby in France is doing exceptionally well. The URC, I think, is a stronger competition than it was back when it was the Pro 14. The Premiership, since those clubs ended up going bust, which was not great news, seems to be on the rebound. The Japanese have got their kind of pro league set up right now. It's still pretty early to say about that, but yeah... Rugby League is doing very well in Australia and doing pretty well here in New Zealand too. But I don't think that means that like we need to learn everything from Rugby League and copy it and that's what's going to fix the game. I don't think the game's that broken, is it? I would also like to speed up certain aspects of the game. But yeah, the idea that we need to tell everyone to change all the rules because we want the game to be more like Rugby League kind of gets a bit old. But anyway, everyone has their own opinions. There's a certain saying about opinions and um, certain parts of the human body. But yeah, there's two hours to fill of kind of talking time during a rugby game. It's live TV. So sometimes people will say stuff which you kind of find annoying or frustrating. For me, this was one of those occasions. I don't think this was um, too outrageous, but it's perhaps been a little bit building in my mind and here i am talking to you guys on a saturday about it but i should be going to play with my children so i will go do that now and uh you guys let us know your thoughts talk to you guys again soon